Hi, so here is a real world example of how we can use the delta delta CT method. So let's assume you have done an experiment using first cells that have been untreated and you determine the amount of interleukin 1 better. And what you see by our tPCR is that the PCR product comes up quite late, it's around uh, CT value of 30 in this case, so it means it's a low abundant messenger RNA. However, you now treat your cells with, say, an interferon, so you induce the expression of interleukin 1 better, actually you induce it very strongly because now your CT value is around uh, 18. So if you just calculate this roughly, what you get is that the ratio of interleukin in your experiment versus the naive cells, this number is about 2 to the power of delta CT, and in this case the delta CT is about 12, so it's 2 to the power of 12, and if you calculate this, is, it's roughly, not exactly, but roughly 4000. However, you're a good student and you want to control for this and see if it's really true or if your samples have been different in the total amounts of RNA. That's why you're looking for a controlled gene. In this particular case, we use a ribosomal protein and the coding messenger RNA for this ribosomal protein as a control. And we, assume, we are assuming that interferon, or the experiment that we did in any case, would not affect uh, the amount of uh, this particular messenger RNA. So if the preparation would be perfectly equal, the CT values should also be equal. And as you see here, we are quite close to that. It's going from 19 point 93 to 19.73. So this means our preparations are very comparable. It's good work in terms of experiments. So what we do now is to calculate this number as well. Well, we don't need to calculate. We just put it down if it's okay with you. So for the control, the ratio between A and B is 2 to the power of 0 0.2, correct? So the corrected value then for the experiment A to B corrected is 2 to the power of delta delta CT and now I need to do the calculations in a bit more accurate fashion. It's 2 to the power of the delta CT that we obtain with the interleukin, that is 29.63 minus 18.03 and that difference, if you calculate it, I'm sure you can figure this out before I do, do you? Well, I come up with 11 0.6. But from that, I need to subtract the delta CT that I obtained for the control, and that's 0 0.2. So the final delta CT value is 2 to the power of 11.4, and if you calculate that, the correct induction is something like 2700. That's the induction that we now obtained with the delta delta CT method and that's the first real world application that you have done. So just to recapitulate and just making absolutely sure that you would not forget this anymore, I'd like to stress that the ratio in your template cDNAs A versus B in a corrected way corresponds to the ratio that you measure for your favorite gene divided by the ratio of A over B that you measure for your control gene or for 
or your reference gene, if you prefer this kind of expression. And that equals 2 to the power of delta CT for your favorite gene, divided by 2 to the power of delta CT for your reference. Now this again is delta CT for your favorite gene, 2 to the power of delta CT for your favorite gene, minus delta CT for your reference gene. And this, in short, is something that we designate as 2 to the power of delta, delta CT. This is something that I really want you to keep in mind and then you will always understand how we calculate the ratio of templates and correct them by the use of control genes. Thanks very much and I see you again with some explanations on the melting curve that you will see in the end of your quantitative PCR. Thanks very much.